Hello, so recently I've been interested in algorithms that let computers beat humans in games. They get really complicated really quickly once you start making an AI for something like chess, but this was my first time doing something like this, so I decided to go for something really easy, which is tic-tac-toe. Tic-tac-toe is pretty much one of the simplest two-player games out there, so I figured it was a good choice to start with. Even so, this AI was a lot of work to implement, but here's what I did. I started off by making the board and allowing two humans to play against each other. I was thinking of making more appealing visuals for this game, but then I decided I kind of liked this whole green and black hackery type thing we have going on here, and I felt like it somehow fit the theme of making an algorithm. My next step was to give the program the ability to tell if the game had been won or if it was a draw. This was as simple as checking if any of the characters in any row, column, or diagonal are the same, and if they are, setting the winner equal to that person. The ability to do this was really important for the AI that I was about to make. One of the early challenges of this program was taking the number of the space the player wants to play, and converting that into the 2D array that the program is using. And I wrote this function to handle that. A 2D array is basically a grid of values that a program can store information in. And it was a little bit difficult for me to convert the number from 1 through 9 into an index in the 2D array, but after a little bit I came up with a solution. It involved finding the row using the number of times that 3 goes into the index, and finding the column using the remainder of that number. Then it was finally time to start implementing the algorithm, and I used something called Minimax. Excuse the low budget visuals, but here's how this works. So in this game we have two players, A and B, and each turn, the player's turn it is can decide to either go left or right. The numbers at the bottom of the tree represent the player's scores. A wants to have a high score and B wants to have the lowest score possible. So the question is, how should A play in order to achieve the maximum score possible? Well we don't want to guess, so we can start by working our way up from the bottom. At this level here, it's A's turn, so A will pick whichever side maximizes their score. So effectively, this branch here has a value of 5. This branch here has a value of 3. Assuming that B plays perfectly, B will always pick the branch that leads to the lowest score, because B wants a low score. So this branch here is effectively 3. And this branch here is effectively negative 2. Then we can see that A would pick the branch at the left at the start, and receive a score of 3 and finish the game. So now we know that this is the path that A should take. Oops. Well, you get my point. <laughs> That's the path A should take to get the highest score. This is called the minimax algorithm, because one side is trying to maximize their score, and the other side is trying to minimize the score. And this is how the tic-tac-toe algorithm will work. It will basically look at all possible moves it can make, and find what its next move should be, assuming the opponent is playing perfectly. Now it was finally time to start working on the algorithm, and I started running into snags really quickly. So I'm writing this in Python, and the first thing you should know about Python is that it has a lot of weird little words that are written out instead of symbols, like other languages usually do it. For example, you type not here, and other languages usually use an exclamation point for example. So anyway, I learned about this keyword is in Python, and then so I just started replacing that instead of equals, because I assumed they were the same thing. So every time I was checking whether two things were equal, I replaced it with is. It turns out is and equals are completely different from each other, and like, when I did this it didn't even give me error messages or anything, it just like did not work at all. And it took me a really long time to figure out why that wasn't working. But finally at about 2am probably, and this was the night before my chem exam by the way, <laughs> I'm not the smartest person, but anyway, I finally had most of the function completed. So what it does is it makes a copy of the current game board for each available move that it can make right now. Then it runs the same function again based on that smaller board. When that smaller board gets to this part of the function again, the same thing will happen. For example, if there are 4 open spaces left, it'll be copied 4 times, and then the function will be run again on each of those copies that each have a different space filled in. Finally, when the board has been completely filled up, the function will return a value. 
either a positive value if the winner is the CPU, or a negative value if the winner is the player. This way it can optimize the game and find the pass it can take to get the highest score at the end, assuming that the player is playing perfectly. And even if the player isn't playing perfectly, which will be true in most cases, it still works perfectly. In order to make the program find the quickest way to win possible, its score is penalized by how many turns it has to make before it finally wins. So I tried running the program and playing against it, and it worked perfectly. Except I beat it. So in other words, it did not work at all. But I thought at this point I should try and be responsible, so I left it at that and went to bed. The next morning, I took a walk after taking my exam, and then I started working on the program again. I ended up just changing one tiny thing, and now it worked perfectly. Here's how the program looks now. In the beginning, it searches 255,000 possible games, and finds the move that will give it the best position at the end. If you're curious, that's actually the number of possible tic-tac-toe games that exist. So here's how the game played out. The CPU played an O here, I played an X here, CPU played an O there, which seems like a good move. Um, I played an X there to block it, and the CPU played an O there to block me from winning. Notice that I never taught the CPU strategies on how to win. For example, I never said if there are two X's in a row, then you should place an O to prevent the player from winning. The way that algorithm works is that it can just make these decisions without any knowledge of the strategy of the game. But looking back, searching through 255,000 possible end states is kind of ridiculous. Nope, that won't do, so now we need to optimize it. The optimization I use is called alpha beta pruning. I won't go too far into the details of it, but if we know that the algorithm is going left to right here, and we're looking at this branch, we know that B here is going to pick the smallest value, and we already have a negative 2 evaluated here. So as soon as we see a 7 here, we know that the value at this branch will be at least 7 because A is picking the maximum of these two values. And since 7 is greater than negative 2, we know that B would never pick the 7 here. We know that B would never go down the path on the right here. So we can cut off this branch. And if there were more layers here, we could cut off all the ones below it that came from this branch. That might not seem like a lot here, but if instead of 3 branches, you had 10 for example, that makes a lot of difference. So let's see what difference it made. So I implemented alpha beta pruning into the algorithm. With alpha beta pruning, the computer now searches 8,453 possible games instead of 255,168. Which is quite a big optimization I'd say. <laughs> and that's basically the whole program. As far as I can tell, this tic-tac-toe program is unbeatable. But the thing about tic-tac-toe is that if two moderately competent people play each other at it, they will pretty much always draw. And that's pretty much what I've found with this algorithm. <laughs> but I don't think that really says much about the program, it's more that tic-tac-toe is a pretty simple game and there's only so much optimization you can really do. I think something that would be even more interesting is an AI that can play people at chess, which I'm working on right now. I'll be making a video about it in a couple weeks, so if you're interested in that, you can subscribe if you want. But anyway, even though programs that can beat you at tic-tac-toe aren't the most in-demand thing, I'd say, it was still a really good experience making it, and I'm glad I did it. I think this program was much more work than I expected, but at least it looks nice. And that's everything. Thanks for watching. I have a lot of similar videos planned in the future, so stay tuned.